What's up, guys and girls? Welcome to another episode. Uh, the other day, Steve Walters from American Photronics came up. He lives about an hour south of here. And this video is going to be our discussions and all the stuff that we went through uh, talking about alignment, beam alignment, and, and lenses. So uh, there's some technical stuff, but it's all stuff that's relevant to, to getting the best results out of your machine. So saying that, let's do it. Hi, I'm Steve Walters. Uh, I, I spent the day camp here at Atlanta Lakes. It's about an hour north of Sarasota where my factory is. I'm here with Chris today. So right now we're doing a picture that you pulled up off the internet. You have it set at 800 and... Uh, 50 DPI. 800 DPI, correct. And tell me some more about what you did. I'm not I'm not a uh, person who understands how to program or do photos and right. make the best optics. I know how to make optics, and I know what you should be able to get out of them, but tell, can you tell us more about what you did here today? So the only thing that I did was uh, I grabbed a high-quality photo stock image from the web and uh, brought it into Photoshop and, and just did a little bit of sharpening uh, so I get a little bit better edge detail. Um, other than that, we are working with basically the photo from the internet and running it at a half tone through light burn, uh, 200 cells per inch at a 22.5 degree angle. Uh, other than that, we're currently at about 12, 12.5% on our power on a 100 watt thunder laser. And uh, I think we're only going uh, 12, yeah, 12 uh, inches per second. And you're using my lens. And uh, for those of you who don't know, my lens, I've designed, and I have, I have a whole set of them. I sell them as a kit. Okay. There's an inch and a half in there. There's a, uh, a two inch, a two and a half inch, and a four inch lens. And I hold a very tight tolerance on my lenses. This is a four inch. Uh, they're glued. So they are really held in a stress-free stress -free manner, so there's no, no twisting or torquing of the crystal. It's, it's held and supported in the, in the best possible manner. The crystal is very soft. All lenses are, are that way. Uh, and with that, you can see they're, they're extremely easy to clean. I think if you can get into a habit of cleaning a lens every day before you start, uh, and if it, you're more likely to do that if it's really easy to do, and if it's easy to put back in, then it's easy to set. When I designed this with the nozzle, um, I hold all my lenses. I hold if it took all the comp, all the uh, stacking tolerances of radiuses and what they can be. My focal point is going to fall within a range of about four thousandths or 0.1 millimeters. When you add the stacking tolerances of how it might sit in the holder. And the distance from the end of the nozzle, how I build my nozzle, I think I'm looking at around the six thousandths variance of a stacking tolerance. And the distance I've designed is 10.5 millimeters to the same diameter as a AAA battery. So what you're saying is that regardless if it's the 1.5 inch lens or the four inch lens, that is your focal length. This with is the, with the, well, that's, that's your focus tool. This is the focus tool. Uh, and again, everybody has these laying around, so they're easy right. to find. Now, if you're if you're doing a cutting, listen, you know where the focal point yeah. is, okay? If you want it down in the material, you're going to use your judgment as far as how much you want it down. The thicker you want it down further. But with this method, you know where the focal point is, plus or minus 6,000. So with, with your lenses, then I don't need four different uh, fo focus tools to, no. to get my, my focus correct. No. We're all based off of that AAA battery, and that's all we need. That's right. All right. That's all right. That, that will save uh, a lot of time. You know, it, you can focus with one of these, you right. know, and I, 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 I look at that, and, I, and that's how do you know the center of the lens. That's the accuracy of plus or minus. I, I'm within six thousandths and finding the focus sweet spot within six. I think uh, here you have another gauge. It's like this, right? Correct. Um, and I, 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 I had my laser uh, for prototyping my lenses, and uh, that I know that chain that these aren't easily. Um, they tend to lose these pretty easily. But you're you're running on this. Let's say you're running. Uh, I think 10, 11 percent power now. 
Uh, yes, 11, yeah, 10% power. But what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> okay, you're on 100 watt tube, 10% power. Now, I got a K40, okay, I'm doing some testing on it. And uh, on my K40, I ran 10% power, and it was probably half the wattage of the machine. It was like 15, 30, 20 watts mm-hmm. on a 40 watt machine. Right. Um, my minimum power was five uh, percent, and I got like three watts. Okay. Okay. And I have, I have about a thousand dollar power meter now. I I've, I've since produced this, um, and, and there's there's some ideas behind this. I, I'd like to I'd like to people look at their you know to help each other in the community. I think it's important to know what you're doing and telling them to communicate with other people. And for me to say, okay, how do you cut half inch or three millimeter birch? Well, what do I got to have? I need right. uh, 18 milliamps. Well, no, no, it doesn't matter because what do I have? 61. What kind of tube do I have? Uh, what does that mean? What is the power? What is the what is the voltage of my activating voltage of my tube? Um, is my tube five years old? You know, right. is it producing more or less power today than it was before? Right. Um, I have a guy who has uh, my, one of my sales guys, Lou. Maybe, maybe people, a lot of people talk. To him. He has uh, an old universal, mm-hmm. universal machine, and it has an RF tube in it. He's had that machine for ten years, and uh, he uses the, my power meter. Uh, he said it was working at he, he could run it at fifty uh, percent power, and right when it was brand new, and right now he has to run it at eighty percent power to do the same thing. What does that mean? Okay. Well, you know, he, he wants to, he has a piece of crystal he used to put in his machine, and he wants to, you know, get it on the first shot, mm-hmm. and the last time he did crystal was two years ago. Right. What the hell, what does he set it at? He knows what he set it at two years ago. Right. But would, wouldn't what it be it, better to know? Due to the depletion of the gases, or making less power. guess? Yeah. On this no idea. $100 trophy, crystal <laughs> trophy, yeah. that you do engrave? Or do you want to know, I, hey, last year, my machine was producing... You know, 20 watts at 50 percent power. Right. Let me see. This is too expensive. I don't want to screw it up. How do I get 20 watts now? Yeah. Okay. I need to run it at 65 percent power now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now this this is a a inexpensive version of a thousand dollar power meter that I have. The the thousand dollar one is has programming inside of it, mm-hmm. so that when you push the button and run the test cycle pattern, which takes about a half a minute. It does some calculations in its little software brain, and it tells you how many wattage. Right. Okay. What this does is you turn it on. It's it's actually the same piece of graphite and the same temperature book. But with this, you're going to do the same set test, but you're going to use a stopwatch to measure the time. Mm-hmm. You're going to look at the temperature rise, and then you're going to say, okay, in that 30-second time frame, 20 seconds of power on, it raised... 20 degrees, and that equals 35 watts. Right. And there's a little chart to go on. Huh. Okay. So it's it's just not as smart. Right. It's thirty dollars, not a thousand. Right. Okay. I know that Cloudway makes one. It's two hundred dollars if you find the right place to buy it for two hundred dollars. Right. Okay. And I think this is something so that this type of community can one reproduce the work that they're doing year to year to year troubleshoot the problems they might have. You know, is it a cracked lens or is your tube not working? Is your beam alignment off? Is your mirror cracked? Is it dirty? Or do you need a new tube? Well, a new tube is hundreds or thousands of dollars. Right. Oh, no, that that is another tool to eliminate replacing tons of stuff for a problem that you're not sure. Uh, Here, I made this. This is the protective head that ships it. Ships it. You know, it ships in. And then it goes in the tube that it came. It, it, this holds it because when it's when it's doing its job, you don't want anything but the air around to be losing the heat. Okay, right. so you don't want this doing the test with it sitting like that because the heat will go in and it'll go right to that metal. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you could do a test straight out of the tube. Okay, but you could take this right here, right in front of your tube, fire it, mm-hmm. do the twenty seconds, and then check the power of your tube. You can come over here and set it on the table, and that's what really the safest and best way to do it is to set this on the table, and then the laser hits it, don't move it, run it for the 20 seconds, 
And that way you're not only just checking the tube, but you're checking the cleanliness of your mirrors, the, the quality of your lens, you're checking your system. Right. And, and seeing how everything is actually getting down to your work. Okay. That makes sense. I have a thousand of them ready to go and I'm going to put them on the website for sale now. I bought uh, four machines now. All cheap machines. Uh, basically the K40 uh, type. And uh, they had some things with the alignment. The alignment wasn't good when it came in. And, and if you didn't try to align it the second you got it, well, forget about it. You aren't going to produce any. Right. It was literally going to miss on many of the areas. Uh, and, and you then you told me that this machine here, uh, you received it, and you didn't really have to do an alignment on it. No. No, I checked okay. it when, when we first got shipment on it. I checked it out, and it, it was pretty dead on. Uh, and I really haven't had to mess with it after that first day, um, which is re remarkable considering it is being shipped overseas in a boat through UPS or FedEx or some shipping company, and then to your door, and then moving it around to get it wherever it's going to be in your house or, or shop. So, yeah, I was very impressed. But your alignment tool showed a couple of adjustments that they needed to have. No, you know what? We And we went through it, and we looked at your head, and, and I put the alignment pull off. Now, I'm just going over this real quick. The alignment pull is it, it's made to match the diameter of the tube, the lens tube that comes out of the machine, so that this goes in. And I spent a lot of effort. Uh, the laser comes out, and it's, it represents uh, the dead center of the lens. Right. And it represents exactly perpendicular to the line of the lens because that's the way that's the way optics are made to be made to work right they made to work where the, the beam interacts with the center at 90 degrees not not 89 and a half not even 89 and 50 minutes right um i can tell you a typical lens tolerance um well from my company it's plus or minus three minutes okay i hold Probably about 20 seconds. So that's a third of a minute. Okay. Um, through the years, I've just worked my process. I've, I've gotten better. Uh, but the industry standard tolerance is plus or minus three minutes. Mm -hmm. One thing I noticed that was different with this machine, when I put my alignment pull in, and we did the four, we did the four corner test with it, and it was it was literally dead on. What I noticed that was this machine doesn't have these linear glideways. I have two machines that have the linear glideways mm -hmm. on them little box square with the rollers in it. And what I noticed with my pole, and you're not going to notice this if you're doing the sports, test, sports, me sports method. What I noticed was as I move across my Y axis, the, the, it actually, the la my red laser actually goes in a circle. It goes up, down, around. It actually makes an oscillation, a full 360 degrees, or sometimes even 720 degree oscillation as it goes down of maybe a millimeter or more. And with this system, I, I've never seen this type of system. It has these bars and these adjustable rollers that clamp on it. I mean, we moved that thing the length of the uh, the, the x-axis, and, and it didn't it didn't no. oscillate or move at all. No, uh, it was pretty straight from an optician's point of view. Mm -hmm. Regardless of where you are in this table, it was extremely square, and you're not going to be entering that head at a different place because this these rails aren't allowing it to oscillate around like like my machine is right that's going to wrap it up for this video i appreciate you guys staying tuned in uh, a lot of information there a little longer than our normal videos um, i am going to try to do a video on the reverse alignment tool that thing helps out so much to get that uh the laser beam right in the center uh, of, of the lens it's it's really a great tool to have in your in your uh, in your toolbox um, go ahead and go to steve's site and, and check out all the stuff he's got to offer uh, high quality lenses really great stuff um, again thanks for watching house of lasers uh, make sure you subscribe hit the button below